so were you there when Brady was going through the Drew Henson stuff that that is the beginning of a journey where where and you were were you counseling him the best when he was thing going that ever through happened that? To, to Tom Brady was Drew Henson. Why is that? Because uh, it became clear to him that uh, I tell you this. So Sports Illustrated called me one time and says we're doing a story with Drew Henson. Drew Henson's one of the greatest kids you ever meet in your life, no doubt. And so insanely he, talented at the prep level in Michigan, he did everything. And he says, uh, and they say, we you want to talk to you about Tom Brady and, and Drew Henson? I mm-hmm. said, I'm still working at Michigan, so clearly you're not thinking this through. That's right. <laughs> right. So like, I will not be talking about that. But I tell you what, you can quote me on this. Drew Henson was Superman. Mm-hmm. Tom Brady was Batman. Batman always thinks he can whip Superman's ass. <laughs> ah. <laughs> you understand? Mm-hmm. He always got a little kryptonite in his <laughs> pouch. Mm-hmm. So the work that we had to do, why was Tom Brady drafted a 199th pick? Well, if he's that good, why is he sharing the limelight with a, a freshman? Correct. Uh, <laughs> If I'm a scout, if I'm the general manager, I'm saying, yeah, okay, he's nice, but he had to share his senior year with another guy, and he must not be that good. Mm -hmm. Look, the mindset of a Tom Brady is the only thing that got him through all that. He was heartbroken, overwhelmed by all all of this. And you'll hear me say it, uh, and you've heard me say it before. When Tom Brady was in my office, I shared with anyone I worked with, you come in my office, you can cry, you can complain, you can do whatever you need to do. You can you can vent. But when you walk out this office, nobody's to see you sweat. You're to walk in and you're to take charge and be in control of what you can control. You can't control how these coaches are making decisions. Mm Mm-hmm. That's not your role. Your role is to be consistent. Single most important word in sports, consistency. If I asked you the single most important word sports in sports to anyone in this room, they would say A, B, C, or D. But if they don't understand consistency, every word they come up with, we can put consistently win. Well, I consistently mean, boom, boom, boom. Brady is the king of consistency. It's just that he was consistent at the most insanely high level that we've maybe seen on a football field. And yes, I know sir. I'm talking about Jerry Rice and Jim Brown here too, okay? Still, I know, I know. So he's in that He's in that pantheon. He's placed himself in that pantheon. But once upon a time, he was a kid coming into your office saying, why do I got to share time? Old. So when you said the best thing to happen to Tom Brady is Drew Henson, why do you say that? Because it triggered and put, took it to the whole nother level. His mental game is the game. The mental game is the game. For anyone that's listening, anyone that wants to read this book, yes. self Mastery is what I teach. I can't teach Tom Brady how to do anything on the football field except master his own mind, be that guy who is committed to leading as best he can other men. You understand? Mm -hmm. And so he trained himself to be so disciplined that no matter what happened, no matter what the decision the coaches made, he was going to be steadfast in his quest to be the best. So when you see him trotting on the field for Drew Bledsoe and you see the conversation when Bledsoe was coming back that Belichick was like, what do I do? Do I go with Brady? Do I go with Bledsoe? And then that happened again after the AFC Championship game that Bledsoe won while Brady got hurt. What were you thinking Were you sitting there, Greg Harden? <laughs> I'm thinking they have no idea <laughs> what they're about to get. But most of, let's go all the way to recent Current time, please. Let's go to twenty-eight to three at halftime in the Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. Wait, a minute, twenty in a Super Bowl, mm-hmm. two best teams in the world. Mm-hmm. Now you know twenty-eight to three at halftime in a Super Bowl, it really is over. And you know you're only watching because you love Michigan and you love Tom Brady and you just out of respect. <laughs> well, he's a Patriot fan over there, so I'm sure you're very invested in what the story is about right. to unfold here, Chris. But it's just think about it. It's twenty-eight to three. Yeah, yes. Over. It's over. All they have to do is be consistent, but they weren't. They had decided it was over, too. The team they were playing had decided it's done. 
and Brady is sitting on the sideline, towel over his head, anticipating, I'm going to get back in the game. At no point is he thinking it's over. At no point can his mind comprehend the loss. Until it's a loss, it ain't a loss to him. This guy is determined to give you 100%, 100% of the time, win, lose, or draw. That's the most important lesson I've taught anyone that will listen to me. What we talked about in my office when Tom Brady was coming to see me is to give 100%, 100% of the time. That's the toughest lesson I'm going to give you. But but wait a minute. Win, lose, or draw? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Until you understand win, lose, or draw. And you have seen him lose a game, but you never saw him quit. Never. (laughs) So uh, just again, just to put a fine point on this, um, did you save Brady from quitting, essentially? Help or help save? Obviously, he's got to make the decision himself, Greg. Check him out. What? You know that. You know me. You already know me. No, I know. I'm not gonna say I saved. Anybody. I know that, but you I, helped. But you helped, bro. You're not gonna. We're not allowing anybody. Mm-hmm. My self worth and self esteem is not based on your decision making. How I feel about me is what I'm teaching. Yes. You've got to decide. Once you can teach a person, if I can teach Rich Eisen. Yes, sir. You've got to decide with or without this environment, your life is gonna be amazing. Uh-huh. How do you tell a 19-year-old Tom Brady, you've got to decide with or without football, your life is going to be amazing. Once you make that decision, football becomes what you do, not who you are. No, and I, and I understand I put myself in a position of interviewing you, putting you in a position where you would take credit for something, and I know that was a mistake. So I'm going to come in a different direction. Yes, sir. Seeing what Brady become became, was there a part – of a moment in your office where it could have gone in a different direction if he didn't find that reserve himself. Absolutely. Um, Tom allowed me to convince him that his limitations are self-imposed and you must stop putting limitations on yourself. He allowed me to talk about self-mastery and being so confident and so comfortable in the skin you're in that you'll never roll over because somebody else doesn't believe in you. (laughs) And so um, he walks in my office and says, hey, I want to be the starting quarterback. He's just lost 25 pounds from acute appendicitis in an emergency operation. He now looks even worse (laughs) than he did two months ago. Mm Mm-hmm. And I'm straightforward. I said, Tom, I can't help you be the starting quarterback, but I can help you understand if nobody else believes in your ass, you'll believe. I said, let's start there. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern for free. 